One of my most popular podcasts is called Almost Unschooling. It seems that a lot of people just can't let go. And almost is better than duplicating school, dragging all those subjects out onto the kitchen table. But I want to spend this podcast on how to help you get over the hurdle. How to help you let go so that you could allow the kids to unschool or even just to embrace it a little more. Because there are a lot of speed bumps on this road to unschooling. We have questions that surface, fear of the unknown, questions that are going to get lobbed at you from critics or that you have yourself and you haven't found anyone with good, sound, convincing answers to your questions like, how will they get into college? What if I'm not smart enough? What if it's just too much time or involvement? Where will I find creative ways to make this better than school? Or who do I think I am to do this? But I think the biggest concern I hear from parents is about gaps. How will they learn everything they need? And then that follows up with we as the parents being blamed if they want to become something that we didn't prepare them for. And then that pushes us into a fear-based overdrive. I know that sounds familiar to a lot of people. And that's the fear I want to focus on this week, about those gaps that you're worried about. It's the fear that prevents you from really embracing unschooling, right? Or if you are embracing it, you have some internal hesitations that keep you from feeling really confident. So that's where we're going today. Also, this month, I'm offering a free unschooling Q&A webinar where we can tackle all of these questions that are coming up for you. I want to help you get the answers you're looking for. I'll put the link to signing up for this in the show notes and at the blog post. But before we dive in, I'm Sue Patterson, your host here at Unschooling mom to mom podcast and all things Unschooling mom to mom Over the past 27 years now, I've seen a lot of what works and what doesn't work when it comes to unschooling. I'm sure you've heard me talk about my own three unschooled kids, but if you're new, they're all grown now, 34, 32, and 29. Their childhood interests were very different, and their young adult lives are different too. But I think the main thing that you'll want to know about them is that doors didn't close because of this unschooling choice. Even for the teen years, they got into colleges and trade schools. They have degrees and certifications. They own homes and businesses. They raise families. All the typical things. But what's different about them is that they don't carry any of the baggage created from going to school from being forced to conform, from waiting for life to happen on the weekend or after they're 18 or once somebody else has decided they've learned enough. We didn't duplicate school at all. No scope and sequence, no curriculum and daily lesson plans. So I can tell you with confidence, unschooling works. It's not theoretical. We did it. And you can too. So that's the whole reason for this podcast and all the resources I create to help you overcome your doubts. All you have to do is reach out and I'll help you find what you need. Okay, so know this. Everyone has fears and everyone's list of fears is going to be different. It's another example of how one size fits all isn't applicable. My fears aren't yours. Yours aren't the same as your mom's or the parents next door. But the one thing that is universal in overcoming fears is that turning a light on, pulling the fear out of the darkness, that's the way past it. So that can be literal, turning on a light. It can be visual, going to a conference, a park day, or even a membership group like mine online to show you that there are people out there doing this. Or it can be turning on a light for your brain gathering the information so fear is not making your choices. Good, solid information is helping you make your decisions. And one thing I have a lot of is information. If you're struggling with fears, I probably have an unschooling guide or a course or an ebook that can help you. 
and I don't mean to bombard you with all the things, but if you're looking for unschooling resources to help you grow your confidence, you're in the right place. I have what you need. I'll put some lists in the blog post so that you can hop over to whatever is specifically concerning you. And remember that webinar that I have later on this month. So here's what I want you to do if you're almost unschooling. Don't stay there because it's familiar. Know that this is a process. I don't know if we ever arrive. I was just talking to my membership group about how we get one thing figured out only to have something else be revealed to us that needs a little work. So when you're gathering up voices to help you learn more about unschooling, notice when people shift gears or say something that's a little conflicting. I bring this up because I was looking at YouTube videos about unschooling from various people. And this one lady was saying she loved unschooling and she described it as beautifully learner driven, not bottlenecking the information, pursuing curiosities. And then she said, but not for math or spelling or really all language arts categories. And I thought, what? Why not? But maybe that's right where you are, too. Maybe you're afraid that you're going to have gaps in the learning if you don't take a deliberate linear path to cover it all. So here's a quick, easy thing I want you to do. You can do it on your phone or grab a spiral. I want you to put yourself on an academic scavenger hunt. I want you to be on the lookout for the subjects in all the activities. If it's primarily math that's freaking you out, please take the Learning Math Without Curriculum course. I go into lots of details of where math is specifically hiding, and I include a scavenger hunt specifically for math. You'll be so relieved to have all this information, even if you keep your curriculum. It begins to release the fear you have about it especially the fear that comes up when your kids resist the curriculum. So scavenger hunt, that's number one. Number two is to loosen the grip that subjects have on you and your perspective. Instead of letting the subjects be the starting place, like, oh, we need to do a little math today, or we haven't done much science lately, we need to do that before Friday. Shift to prioritizing the topics that your kids are interested in and explore those. You don't have to turn it into a lesson. Just play with it. Let the kids show you why they're interested. Stop trying to orchestrate everything and be more of an observer. Help them if they have a question, but not in a teachery way, in a loving parent way who wants to help them explore. Sure, if you know a bit of information, toss it in and see how it lands. But if they want to guide this exploration, go where they want to go. And when we do this, we learn so much about our kids, how they learn, what they enjoy. And this gives us data so that we're not doing some one-size-fits-all way of sharing information with them. And they learn that you like letting them lead sometimes. And that helps them develop self-confidence and that you enjoy being around them and that you'll play what they want to play instead of them only getting your attention if they do what you want. Okay, I can hear the wheels turning. You might be thinking, okay, play with them, fine. But where's this learning you're talking about? Won't there be gaps in their learning if all we do is play? And that brings me to your role while you're playing, just for this exercise. Remember that scavenger hunt I mentioned? This is what I want you to do. Mentally check off the subjects that are getting touched on as they play. Challenge yourself to see how many you can identify. They might not dive deeply into something, but all of those little bits of information will add up. So what happens this week? Let's see. I always use Shark Week as an example of this, so let's think of something else. May 4th, Thursday is Star Wars Day. When you look at that through a schooly lens, okay, it's a movie about space, fictional story, something you let them watch after they've done all the real learning, right? But what else could they learn from something as simple as Star Wars? I knew it was Star Wars Day because of the monthly strewing calendar we create, 
I spent the weekend getting it ready for subscribers. It's a celebration for every day of the month, and I send out links with more information to explore. But something I've added for those who need a tool to help them de-school are learning objectives for each day. It's not that you need to do this if you're already happily unschooling, but if you're nervous about the learning or almost unschooling, I want to give you a quick reference to subjects that they learn with these various non schooly topics. So let's look at Star Wars Day. What could reassure you so you don't pull out the curriculum to cover something? I'll get you started here. And for those of you who already get the string calendar or want to, some of this is at our subscriber portal page. When you think of Star Wars, what do you think about language arts? Does it weave in there anywhere? How about vocabulary expansion? Some unique words like Jedi or the Force or compound words like lightsaber. Creative writing, they learn about plot and character development, conflict and story arcs. It expands into literary analysis. They can learn about symbolism and identifying themes. What about math? Geometric shapes and concepts like angles and symmetry and 3D shapes. Many of the scenes involve characters with different sizes and proportions, and those comparisons are math. Speed, distance, time, estimating, measuring, all math. The characters and the viewers are calculating the probability of success or failure. The use of formulas and coordinates and analyzing patterns and making calculations are all components of algebra. Science is kind of easy to see, right? Astronomy, planets, stars, moons, galaxies. Physics like gravity and magnetic forces. Biology shows up with various adaptations of the creatures and their species to their environments. Robotics and artificial intelligence is certainly in there. Chemistry touches on atoms and elements and chemical reactions and crystals. Engineering with discussion of structural integrity of the spaceships and the weapons and aerodynamics. Even genetics and ideas of inheriting certain traits. So that's quite a few traditional subjects happening in the movie, because there's obviously the special effects and technology, art and design, music and how it influences us, morality and mythology, good versus evil, comparisons to wars we've all learned about in history, critically thinking about the consequences of actions. So when we discuss their thoughts and opinions about characters and stories and all these things I've listed You'll see how they're learning, not in a linear way, not from a scope and sequence, not with quizzes and grading systems, but conversationally based on interests. We already know that when a child or any human is interested in a topic, they stay engaged. They retain the information, and that's the best starting place. The organic growth from living life right there with them without trying to manipulate it all because Some curriculum company decided all kids need to learn this before that. It isn't true. It's just easier for a system to manage all their students. But you're not a system. You're a family. And you can engage with them on topics of interest and then fill in what's needed as it's needed. Truth is, school flooded you with facts, most of which you've forgotten. They weren't relevant. It didn't provide you what you really needed. Did it teach you how to do taxes or manage your finances? Did it help you know your own learning style and preference? Or did they plow through and blame you if their method didn't stick? It's time to break free from the old ways of learning just because they're familiar. We can't keep relying on outdated methods and expect our kids to thrive in a rapidly changing world. We have the opportunity to help our kids embrace the world as it is now so they can successfully move into the future if we can just overcome our fear. If you're a parent worried about your kids missing out on important information if you try this unschooling approach, let me put your mind at ease. We live in this information age and kids today have access to an incredible wealth of resources and knowledge that we didn't have in previous generations. You can continue to prod the kids through the topics that they're not interested in because you're afraid of potential gaps. 
But remember that with a quick Google search or a YouTube video, they can learn about any topic under the sun. Sticking with the scope and sequence out of fear keeps you from the amazing opportunities to explore and discover together. Instead of focusing on rote memorization of topics they aren't going to retain, you could make a shift to something bigger. You could inspire the kids to be curious, to ask questions, and never stop learning. With the world's knowledge at our fingertips, the possibilities are endless. So encourage them to follow their interests. They'll create their own unique mountain of knowledge that will serve them well as they move through life. They'll be even better equipped to embrace all the opportunities that the future has to offer them. We can't possibly know what awaits them, but by fostering a love of learning and curiosity, we can be sure they'll be prepared for whatever comes their way. And that's really what we all want, to make sure they're prepared, right? Okay, I run a little longer on this, but hopefully it's helpful. I can help you move past your fears, whether it's gaps or something else holding you back. You don't have to figure this out alone. Reach out for more resources and I'll be back again next week. Happy end schooling.